Okay guys, so welcome back to the show. And this week we are out and about again. You can see we're up on Pine Island Road in Chiquita. This is one of the intersections up here. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a idea of what's going on around here. We've been talking about all the change and this particular video, um, it's, it came about because of James. James, one of my clients, he travels the roads all the time. And he mentioned a lot of things he's seeing on the road. And you know what, as I read his list, I was like, you know what, those are things that are true here. These are nuances of what it's like driving in the area. Um, if you haven't driven in Southwest Florida over the last year, you're in for a treat when you come back for season, if that's what you're doing. Uh, but what I want you to do when you, when you listen to us talk about this video today, we're gonna be talking about some of the road rules that you need to know before moving to Florida. And I want you to do me a favor. Comment down below where you're moving from and see, let me know how many of the things that we talk about are things you deal with at home. Because many of these, these things will be specific to Florida. We have a lot of drivers that are coming here from all over the world. A lot of different driving attitudes, a lot of different driving behaviors. So mix that all together and shake it up a bit and have an infrastructure that's not ready for all these people and you have a recipe for what we're gonna be talking about today. Again, Florida life, the road rules when you're thinking of moving to Florida. We're getting after that next. Okay, so a couple of things that I noticed, first and foremost, um, Dave and, Dave and De Denise just uh, closed on their condo up in Punta Gorda. And one of the things that David told me is that he's already had to get his tire repaired once or twice, and he's been there a week. So he lives in a new construction community. The problem with all this construction is these things are dropped on the roads all the time. So my word of advice to you is keep a plug kit in your car or be ready to have some tire repair policy on your tires because with all the construction going on around here, it's going to happen. By the way, I just wanted to mention real quick, the reason why I decided to come out here today, despite the traffic noise, you might as well get used to this noise because you're gonna hear it at all the major intersections on all the major roads. Um, if you live close to a busy road, you will hear it. The sound does carry. Remember, Florida's flat, so the sound is going to carry much easier. Uh, I live probably two, three miles off of uh, the burnt store extension where veterans turns into burnt store. And those cars out there go about 70 miles an hour, probably 85 in reality, but I can hear their tires on the road at night. It's just what it is. The travel, the sound will travel, so be prepared for that. Another thing I noticed is you're always in a competition. Whether you're at a light and innocently just waiting to go and the guy next to you races off, or you're trying to get into a, a lane and somebody jockeys real quick and speeds up to, to kind of knock you out, um, that's a common behavior here. In fact, I was at Home Depot yesterday getting some, some lawn and garden stuff, and the guy was following behind with his cart and he literally said, race to the cashier. And I'm like, dude, no, I'm not racing. <laughs> but the point is, is that everybody's in a hurry. Everyone wants to get somewhere. Everybody wants to be first. Um, so be ready for competition because it's going to happen. All right, so you already know that speed is one of the things that we've talked about a lot of times in this area. Um, we, get, we get knocked on a lot for how fast people drive and how bad they drive. That's why our, our uh, auto insurance is a little bit higher here than it is in other areas. In fact, auto insurance is higher in Cape Coral than it is in Fort Myers. Even though Fort Myers seems much busier and has much more commercial stuff going on, Cape Coral, we're just notorious for bad drivers. And you're going to see it no matter where you go. Uh, so just <clears throat> keep in mind the speed thing. It will definitely play a part. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, so hold tight, don't go anywhere. Um, again, I wanna, I wanna get some feedback on how many of these things you guys see at home. This is kind of funny and kind of not, but when the light turns green, you get about three, four, 10 cars max that get through the light, right? And then you get another five or six on yellow and four more on red. That's the way it goes. Literally, the lights can change so fast. There's no time on these lights. Uh, there are sensors that are gonna pick up how much traffic it is. It will adjust from time to time. Is it perfect? Heck no. I mean, you can be in a cycle. Earlier today, it took me three cycles to get through one light. So, and this is on a busy road. It's on Veterans Parkway, one of our busiest. 
So it just goes to show it doesn't matter what road you are on, it matters the time you're going and how much traffic is there because it will adjust according to that. The other thing to keep in mind is you don't stop on yellow. You keep going, give it a second or two or three, but the other thing to remember, there are a lot of, a lot of red light runners here. Um, give yourself a couple seconds before you actually take off in the line. So if somebody's competing with you, revving their engine, wanting to race, don't be that guy. Because I'm telling you from now, I've seen too many people trailing through a red light. And if you take off, I used to be one of those guys, I'd, I'd go as soon as the light turned. Now I give it a second or two, just to be sure there's nobody lagging to come through the intersection. Also, if you have small vehicles, a motorcycle, moped, scooter, um, those slingshot things, little cars, the Can-Ans, all those different smaller vehicles, even, even small cars, be very careful. Your head's gotta be on a swivel. People are so distracted all the time that you just, you're gonna end up in an accident. In fact, I'm, I'm selling my motorcycle. So if anybody wants a victory cross country tour, it's black, uh, <laughs> relatively low miles for these bikes. But uh, yeah, I'm selling it. I just, I don't have faith in uh, the drivers down here and I'm not willing to put my life on the line for it. So the three lanes that we have, you see some of our roads here have, uh, have three lanes. Some have two, some all the way down to one. If there's three lanes, it goes slow lanes on the right, fast lanes in the middle. Fast lane being if it says 55, you're going 65. And then all the way on the left, that's race car fast. So if you're all the way on the left and your turn isn't for a mile or two or three, get over, get to the middle or to the right. There's gonna be plenty of time to get in your lane, but all you're doing is creating further congestion. And this is where people start racing around to get around you because you're now clogging up the system. So it may not be what you're used to back home. I know some of you might only have one light in your town, but that's not what it is here. And people are impatient. And if you aren't moving at the flow, you need to go. That's just the thought process. Now turn signals here are optional. They shouldn't be, but they are. Um, many times people don't turn them on because they know if they show you their intention of where you're gonna go or where they're gonna go, that that competition thing kicks in and somebody's gonna block you out. I see it all the time. As soon as you start going a little faster, the car next to you jockeys a little bit faster to keep you from passing them. It is what it is. So turn signals, yes, it's a courtesy. It'd be nice if people used it, but a lot of times it doesn't get used so be on the lookout for brake lights because that's your other indicator. If you don't knew, know uh, four-way stops very well, uh, don't really understand them, don't understand roundabouts, I would say educate yourself. Um, especially if you're thinking about living in the Northwest or further south than Veterans Parkway, um, there's a lot of four-way stops. We still have a lot of four-way stops here. So get to understand a little bit more about that. If you don't, uh, you will run into it often. Um, again, any property that is north of Pine Island Road, going up into the northwest and northeast, outside of the main roads like Del Prado and Santa Barbara, there are no stop lights. There's, it's all stop signs. So it's just something you're gonna have to get used to. Now, James made a very important uh, point about this and he really wanted me to, to throw it out there, but if you're a snowbird or a retiree, you have no business being on the road between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. That's when the rush is, that's when everybody's trying to get to work, that's when all the, the contractors and vendors are picking up their materials, that's when it is busiest. So if you don't have to be on the road, please don't. The same thing goes for the hours between four and seven. I mean, you see behind me, the traffic isn't even terrible right now, but it's still, it's still not even five o'clock. There's still a couple more hours. This will really start jamming around 5, 36 o'clock, but then I'm gonna lose the sun. So I had to come out and do this now. But as a courtesy, if you don't have to be on the road at those times, help the folks out, plan your schedule uh, a little bit differently so that you may not be adding to the congestion that's going on with all this traffic. Now in this area, we measure distance by time, not miles. Yeah, if somebody asked me how far something was, I would say, well, it's about 15 minutes. That's just what we do. I, don't, I, I can't tell you why. I think it's just because the fact that the whole area itself is not overly large, miles-wise, even though we're 120 square miles as a city, going from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, can't be more than 10, but that's a guess. I'd rather say it's about 25 minutes, give or take, depending on how fast you drive. So keep that in mind. If somebody asks you how far something is, give it in minutes, because that's what we're really interested in. How long is it gonna take me to get there? 
Hey guys, I just want to remind you, a lot of time goes into making these videos to give you as much content as possible to be able to help you understand what it's going to be like living here. So if you can hit the like button down below and just make sure that this gets shown to more people like yourselves that are interested in knowing all this stuff I'm sharing with you. And how are we doing on the list? You guys find some things that, uh, that are like this back home? All right, we're going to keep going. Because you have so many beautiful sites here, there's a lot of distracted, indecisive, just uh, man, I don't know what, is it even lack of skill? These drivers are just not all together there. Then you add the texting and the videos and the apps like Facebook and Instagram and all the other crap that the people are going through on their phones. Lots of distraction. And let's not even start talking about if an accident happens. If you run upon an accident, most of the traffic delays on the opposite side are gonna be because all the people have to stop and see what's going on. Do everyone a favor, keep your eyes on the road, keep driving straight. And that goes for everything else I mentioned beforehand about distracted. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Palm trees everywhere. Our sunsets and our sunrises are absolutely amazing. So there's gonna be a lot to distract you. When you cross the bridges to go back and forth from Fort Myers and Cape Coral and you see the river, that's gonna be a distraction. It's beautiful, I get it. I do it myself. But that's one more thing that causes the slowdown of this traffic and causes more of the angst with all the drivers. The other thing I noticed the other day is it's not necessary to leave a three car length buffer between the car in front of you and yourself. Doing that delays that whole line of traffic getting through the light because now you've got to ease up when the traffic starts moving and everybody behind you is doing the same thing. So try to keep in mind a car length is more than enough. Um, it's still gonna keep you safe. It's gonna keep things moving. And again, even at the stoplight, put your damn phone down because you're not gonna see the light change and then you're not gonna go on time and you're gonna be another reason why the people behind you aren't getting through the light. If it was you as the person behind, would you want to be stuck behind somebody scrolling their phone at the light? It's a courtesy thing. Here in Florida, another thing you're gonna notice is you can't drive more than a couple miles without seeing orange cones, orange barrels, some kind of construction site. And these construction sites can sit there for a very long time. Our projects don't move quickly. They're happening all the time. They happen at the worst possible hours. They'll save it for a weekday during the rush hour where I just asked all the retirees <laughs> and snowbirds to stay home. Yeah, they've got their, their stuff set up and pushing a lane out of the way. So now we went from three lanes to two lanes and maybe even sometimes down to one lane. It happens. It's just what it is. I don't know why they can't do the night work and just, you know, do it when people are sleeping, but that's what it is. Just be aware. Always plan for some kind of uh, interruption or inconvenience when you're traveling. Just add that extra time, that extra buffer in there. I saw this person the other day. Do us all a favor. Don't make a left hand turn from the right lane. Not cool. I shouldn't even have to say it, right? Now, merging into traffic is an essential skill. The reason why I say that, we've got an intersection right back down here, okay? It's where the Aldi and the Farmer Joe's, they come into Pine Island Road. I've seen so many drivers, it's a two lane road, right? And I've seen so many drivers that are waiting to cross all the way over to the far lane. They don't merge in and move over. Now, mind you, you got a, you've got a good, I don't know, thousand feet or so before you have to get in the turning lane. Merge, then turn over. Pretty simple. Remember, merging is key. Get used to it. Now, tolls down here are a fact of life. If you're crossing the bridges, in most cases, you're going to pay a toll. Um, the northern bridges are free. But the Veterans Parkway and the Cape Coral Parkway bridges, they are $2 to get over and back. Um, it's, a one, it's just a one charge thing. You're not charging each, each direction, just the one time for the full travel. If you get the FOB, um, it's gonna be a discount. Otherwise, they're going to just snap a picture of your plate and bill you that way. Another thing to consider is if you're traveling on uh, roads like I-75, I-4, I-95, any of these main highways. If you missed your turn, don't stop and back up to try to get off the exit. That is the worst thing you can do. But the number of people we've seen do this, 
ridiculous. You're asking for trouble, you're asking for an accident, go up to the next exit, get off there and come back. Another thing that's really interesting about Florida is every numbered street in our area has a court, road, place, street, drive, loop. I mean, every <laughs> suffix you can put on a road is after the number. Doesn't necessarily happen for the name of the, the uh, streets, but then again, because the Cape is set up the way it is, you're gonna see a lot of NW, SW, NE, SE. So that's all your Northeast, your Southwest. I mean, that's just, that's gonna be on almost every address, especially if it's got a number on it. Now, if you are one of the people that are making a turn off one of these main roads, sometimes you don't have an actual uh, merge lane to get over and to make that turn. Or not merge in this case, but like an off-ramp kind of deal. If you don't have that, that doesn't mean to come to a full stop before you make the turn to where you're going. Keep the flow, keep the speed that you had. Yes, slow down, obviously, but we see people literally stop and make the turn like it's a stop sign. No, we don't do that. Another way to get yourself in a really bad accident. And I think that James wanted this one in particular to really stand out. He wants you to know that shorts, flip-flops, and tank tops are considered business casual in Florida. <laughs> That's probably because James is a boat captain uh, and has a jet ski business, so yes, his his business day is all about dressing that way, having a good time. So if you're looking for a good time on the water, I took my son out to do it on jet skis for his birthday. We had a fantastic time, very affordable, great experience. All right guys, so that's a little bit more about driving in this area, what you need to know when you're going to be moving here. And if you have any other questions about moving to the area, check out one of these other videos. If you've got a specific question that you need an answer to, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.